This is 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News at 5. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Frank Beloy. And I'm Laurie Johnson. Strong storms rolled through Central Georgia a little earlier today. Let's check in off the top with Chief Meteorologist Ben Jones to see what's ahead. Well, the good news is the rain has made its way out of here now. You can see here on Doppler Max HD, everything is continuing. Is gone. Coming up in a little bit, uh, we're going to tell you about rain, rain, and more rain. That's all in the way. Okay, thanks a lot, man. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Senate leaders unveiled a budget deal, calling it a significant bipartisan step forward. The deal increases spending uh, for both the Pentagon and for domestic programs. But there is still some work to be done to avoid another government shutdown Thursday night. Wei Xiaoxing has the story from Capitol Hill. Senate leaders reached across party lines to seal an agreement on a two-year budget deal. Democratic Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called the pact a genuine breakthrough. This budget deal is the first real sprout of bipartisanship. Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell joined him in outlining a plan calling for spending increases in both military and domestic programs, including veterans health care and fighting opioid abuse. No one would suggest it is perfect, but we worked hard to find common ground and stay focused on serving the American people. What the Senate deal does not include is any new language on immigration, and that's already causing a snag in the House. Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi wants House Republicans to allow a separate vote on legislation protecting immigrants who came to the U.S. illegally as children. The Senate has already promised that vote. Pelosi, speaking for hours on the House floor, asked for the same guarantee. Without that commitment from Speaker Ryan, comparable to the commitment from Leader McConnell, this package does not have my support. The budget deal got a positive review today. from the White House. We are pleased that Congress has been able to meet our defense spending requirement and come together on a two-year spending bill. If the House opposes the plan, it adds more pressure for at least a temporary agreement to fund the government by Thursday night or face another shutdown. Just a few hours after the Enough is Enough meeting in Warner Robins last night to discuss the city's violent crime, there was a shooting on Evergreen Street. Jacob Reynolds joins us live from Warner Robins with what happened and the details on the street's violent history. Well, four people were in a car on the front lawn of a house on the 200 block of Evergreen Street when they heard gunshots and ducked. Now, none of them were shot, but one of them was hit by shattered glass. Bullets also hit the house. According to Warner Robins Police, this is the third shooting on the street since June of last year. In that June shooting, 39-year-old 30, Jason Howell was shot in the neck and later died. Police say that shooting was drug-related. Then, in December, a different home was shot at but no one was injured. Assistant Chief John Wagner says besides drug problems on the street, there are other issues as well. We, we have seen it all um, over there. Uh, looking at the reports, a lot of them um, are domestic related, uh, through family violence related. And then there's a lot of exes that folks are not happy with. Now, Wagner says none of those victims from last night were able to give any sort of suspect description, but police say there's no evidence to connect this to drugs at this time. Live in Warner Robins, Jacob Reynolds, 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News. Thanks, Jacob. Anyone with information is asked to call making regional crime stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME. Bibb County Sheriff's Office says in 2017 they arrested 266 juveniles for nearly 450 offenses. And those same juveniles accounted for nearly a third of gun-related events for the year, or arrests rather. Yesterday, Sheriff David David asked Macon clergy to help promote unity in the community in hopes of reducing the number of violent crimes. District Attorney David Cook says he's also concerned about juvenile crime. Cook says he has visited other counties to see programs they have in place to fight that problem. Sheriff David Davis does a good job of having his um, deputies and detectives investigate crime and solve those crimes. And, and our office, I think, has done a good job of holding them accountable in court. The, but the bigger issue is catching this on the front end to where we don't see them to begin with. District Attorney Cook says one idea he got from the state of Florida is creating centers to help children academically and socially. We have new information on this morning's deadly wreck in Milledgeville. According to the Baldwin County Coroner John Gonzalez, the accident killed 33-year-old Deanna Wells of Wilkinson County. 
A man is also in critical condition. Gonzalez says it happened around 6 a.m. on the 600 block of Highway 49 West. He says Wells was riding with the man in a pickup truck when he drove off the road. Wells died on the scene. The wreck still under investigation. Also, a woman died this morning after a wreck on Highway 41 in Perry near the Westfield School. However, the Georgia State Patrol says the victim died from a medical problem before the wreck. Robbie Robertson with the State Patrol's Perry's Post says the woman was taken to the Perry Hospital where she was pronounced dead. Her name has not been released. Well, if you have tickets to tonight's Willie Nelson show at the Megan City Auditorium, you're going to have to wait a few months, about nine months actually, to hear Willie. As we told you yesterday, the country legend canceled tonight's show because he has the flu. Today, the Macon Centerplex said the show has been rescheduled to November the 10th. Tickets for tonight's show, which was sold out, will be honored in November. By the time he's back in Macon this fall, Willie will be 85 years old. Um, from the athletes winning the gold medals and, and following our Olympic person that we had that we were following out of Americas to the bombing, um, you know, it was definitely being a part of history. Nearly 22 years ago, our own Suzanne Lala reported on the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. As Korea prepares for this year's games, we take a look back at memorable Olympic moments. And even a very interesting interview Suzanne had forgotten all about. And that's tonight on Eyewitness News at 6. And coming up next. Athletes from around central Georgia making college plans. We'll check in with Marvin JP to see where some of the gridiron's best are headed when Eyewitness News at 5 continues. And before we go, the video of the day. In case you missed it this morning, our own Hunter Williams was out at Mercer's Five Star Stadium for his Hunting for Gold series. He went for the gold against the Mercer women's soccer team. Ooh. His goal was to save four shots. Oh. Only one got past him, but a few did miss the net. One went off the goal post. Of course, oh. it's a much smaller net than they usually <laughs> use in soccer. We do want to mention that next week. He'll be hunting for gold when he grabs a mitt to play ball with the Houston County Bears. I'm looking forward to it. Tune in to Eyewitness News Morning next week for that. And we'll be right back with signing day coverage on Eyewitness News at 5.